Y'all know what time it is. If you don't know what time it is, check your watch. Check the clock on your phone. It is work on your game o'clock. Y'all know what it is. We do this every day. Here on the live on Facebook. Facebook to my left. We got Instagram live over here to my right. As y'all come in on IG, do something to make yourself known. <laughs> Tap the screen, leave a comment, tell me where you checking in from. Something to make yourself known. We're gonna get started in one moment. Hope everybody's having a great day. We got some great weather finally back here in Miami. It's rainy season out here. It's thunderstorm season. So we get these rain showers every day, every now and then. Somebody make yourself known in the comment. Facebook is y'all checking in. Don't be shy. Uh, leave a comment. Hit the share button. Hit the like button. Belize is in here. Andy, what's going on? Wisdom says, what's going on? Jack. Jack is here. We got Birmingham, Alabama in the house. We got California in the house. As y'all check in, we're going to get started in one minute. I ain't even going to waste too much time waiting for people to come in. Y'all know what I say. Early is on time. On time is late. And late, forget about it. You might as well be forgotten. The topic here today, y'all see it. I'm going to introduce the topic. I'm going to tell you why we're talking about the topic, how it relates to everything that's going on in the world today. Listen, every topic that I put out is related to everything that's going on in the world today. Listen, I'm really good at this. All right, you didn't know. All right. And what I'm about to give you right here is another, another masterpiece right here on this live that I do every day. If you didn't know, this is your first time, understand I've been doing this every day. And if this is your last time, I'm going to keep doing it every day, even when you ain't here. Nick, what's going on as you checking in? Let me tell you about who I am, why I'm here, and what we about to do. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. I'm a former nine-year professional basketball player. I'm an author of 26. Yes, you heard that number correctly. 26 books. I've done four TED Talks. I have published over 15,000 pieces of content to the internet over the last 15 years, and none of those numbers are exaggerations of anything. That's an underestimation. I've published over 7,000 videos, 7,000 articles, 1,500 podcast episodes. My shows, you just look me up. Just look my name up on any platform that you prefer and you're going to find me. The only one I'm not on is TikTok, but I'm on everything else. And what do I do? I teach this whole philosophy that's called work on your game. It's all about taking the mindset necessary to get into the top 1% of your profession. What I did is in the sports world, what you can do in the business world, in your family life, in your everyday life. It is called Work On Your Game. Work On Your Game is one of my books. I have it right here. I'll tell you about this later. And I'm going to tell you who Work On Your Game is for because it's not for everybody. Work On Your Game is not for everybody. It's for three specific types of people. Number one, person who feels like you need more skill, more game, more ability. That's one type of person. Second type of person, person who feels like you have game, but you need to get better at showing it and proving it. You need to get better at your showing and proving. Your performance needs to step up. And number three, person who feels like you have game and you are performing, but you're not being recognized. You are not being seen, heard, and known for what you do. You got a marketing challenge. So one of these three challenges, you need more skill, you need to get better at performing, or you need to draw attention to what you do. If you have any one of these three problems, you are in the right place, you're listening to the right person, this is the right time. That is what work on your game is about. So hopefully somebody who's listening to me right now understands that I'm talking to them. So we're going to get into this material here today. The topic is focus is easy, distraction is hard. Now, with this last week plus of everything that's been going on, uh, last actually forget the last week, the last three months with the COVID-19, then we have all this uh, unrest that's going on in America, the social unrest that's going on in America over the last two weeks. We know that uh, somebody lost their life at the hands of a police officer. And there's all kinds of stuff going on. Everybody's making statements. People are doing this thing and that thing. And people are arguing about this and that. And not everybody's disagreeing. I mean, not everybody's agreeing. People have different opinions. Everybody's saying this, this thing and that thing. And you can end up using, losing a whole lot of your time on the internet. Listen to what everybody else is saying and what everybody else is doing. And maybe even reacting to what other people are saying and doing. The challenge with doing that, unless it's your full-time job to react to what people are saying on the internet, unless that's what you do for a living, it is taking you away from what puts food on your plate, what pays the bill for that phone you're watching me on right now that you know, takes care of you and your life. And it's easy to get distracted because I heard somebody say the other day, the algorithm is smarter than you. All right? The algorithm on Twitter is smarter than you are, which means that the algorithm knows how to keep you scrolling through Twitter or Facebook or watching videos on YouTube or looking at photos on Instagram. It knows how to grab your attention and take it away from what you should actually be doing, which is focusing on the thing that you know, pays your bills and feeds your kids, if you know what I'm talking about. So people often ask me, they've always asked me, because I wrote a book on discipline. It's right here. It's called The Mirror of Motivation. I'll tell you about this later. I did a whole chapter on discipline in this book right here. I talk about discipline 
all the time. So since I talk about discipline, people would often ask me, Dre, how do I get focused? How can I avoid distraction? How can I be more focused <clears throat> and target more in on the things that I need to be doing so I can stop paying attention to what everybody else is doing and really you know, get my job done and take care of my business and do what I got to do? And people would often ask me, how can I avoid distraction? It was so hard to focus, Dre. How do you actually do it? How do you manage to focus so much so you can create this content and do your work and write books and create products and programs and all these things? How, could, how do you stay focused? What's your secret to staying focused? Let me tell you something. There is no secret to staying focused because focus is the easy part. All right, Focus is not hard. It's distraction that's hard. All right, when you're distracted, that's when the problems come in. Focus is not difficult. But I'm going to help you understand exactly what I mean and exactly how not only are you going to understand this logically, you're going to understand it emotionally and you'll be able to put it into action in your own life. Now, if that's something that you're interested in, turn the volume up and wherever you are listening to this right now. If you're able to handle the fact that focus is easy and distraction is hard, focusing will be much easier than you thought it was. Point number one, paying attention and locking into one thing, right? That's what focus is, right? When you pay attention to one thing, you're locking on just this thing and you're not going to be doing anything else. You're not distracted by this and that and what they said and what this person is doing and these notifications going off on your phone. You're what everybody else wants you to do, what everybody else's agenda is. Focus is when you can exclude all those things and just zero in on one specific thing, right? That's what focus means, right? Well, here's the thing. That is much easier than being spread thin trying to do this thing and that thing and all these different things at the same time you're trying to juggle this timeline and going through this feed and seeing what this video said and replying to this person's text message that's what distraction sounds and looks like and feels like right isn't it much easier to focus on one thing than it is to try to focus on 10 things at the same time can somebody tell me if that's wrong isn't it much easier to just focus on one thing if I just said, oh, all I need you to do is just this one job. I don't need you to do two jobs. I don't need you to do 20 jobs. I don't need you to do 37 jobs. I need you to do just this one job. You had one job. Y'all heard people say that before? One job is easy to do. Is when somebody tries to do three and seven and 12 jobs, that's when they start messing up. All right, so focusing and only doing one thing is the easiest thing you could possibly do in your life. But human beings, here's the reason why we have such trouble focusing is because with these big brains that we have up in our heads and the fact that we all think we are so damn smart and we all think we can out we think we can outsmart the basics we all think once we get good at doing one thing we're like all right i'm so good at doing this one thing i can do one and a half things let me do this other thing on the side oh i could do this thing too all right, let me do two and a half things all right let me add let me double that let me try to do five things then before you know it, you're doing 50 things and you're not doing good at any of them and you're like, damn, I'm distracted. My brain is fragmented. I'm going in all these different directions. I don't know what's going on. I need, I need some time. I need some space. You know, I, I'm stressed out. And this is what happens. It's because of our big brains and our human arrogance, we begin to think that focusing on one thing is just not enough. One thing is just, is just too small time for us. So we convince ourselves that we are smart enough and good enough and non-human enough to try to do more than one thing at the same time. Problem is, you can do more than one thing at, at, at a time. The challenge with it is you won't be good at any of them. Nobody has ever been great, excellent, at more than one thing at the same time. You might be good at a second thing. You will never be great at more than one thing at the same time. Focus is the easiest thing you could possibly do. When you try to do more than one thing and distract yourself, that's when things start to get hard. As soon as you're doing more than one thing, that's when things get difficult. Point number two. Topic here today is focus is easy, distraction is hard. Let me tell you what focus does for you. Focus simplifies. Any of you ever felt like you were, or maybe some of you feel right now like you're kind of stressed out, like you got too much going on? Ever feel like you're doing too much? You feel like you're being pulled in too many different directions? You're trying to do too many things? You're looking at your everything that you got on your plate and you're like, how the hell am I ever going to get all of this done in the amount of time that I have or with the amount of resources that I have or the amount of space that I have in my life? You're like, how the hell am I ever going to do this? I got way too many things going on right now and you have and you got to get it done and you have no idea how you will ever get to it before you know, time runs out or the sun burns out and everybody on earth dies because you got too many things going on on your plate. Understand that only happens when you get distracted. Only happens when you're doing a whole bunch of different things. If you're doing just one thing, and you just focus on that one thing. Even if it's a big project. Even if it's a whole lot that you got to do. What's, what's Elon Musk trying to do? He's trying to put people on every planet, right? And build communities on them. That's a lot. That's a big project that he got going on. But understand, he is focused on that one project. I guarantee you, 
he doesn't feel like he's splintered and going in too many different directions when he's focused on that project. Now, if he gets distracted, as I was looking at this thing and that thing and trying to do too many things, that's when the distraction comes in. The same thing for him as it is for you. If you just decide to focus and you can discipline yourself to stay there until the job is done, then move on to the next thing, do this thing when that's done, then do the next thing, then do the next thing, then do the next thing, and whatever it may be, that is much, much, much easier than trying to do more than one thing at the same time. Problem with human beings, we can only focus on one thing at a time. We got two hands, but you can't have one hand. You ever try to have somebody tell you to like tap your head like this and, and rub your stomach at the same time? It's hard to do. And even if you are able to pull it off, here's the problem. You can't do anything else. You got to put all your focus into splitting your brain in half and to patting with this head and hand and rubbing with this hand. See, I can't even say it. This is the thing. We can only focus on one thing at a time. We can only do one thing well at once. So focus simplifies everything. It makes it a very simple program for your brain, very simple process for you to follow. And there's no way that you can get distracted when you're focused. See, people ask me, Dre, how do you avoid distraction? You don't avoid distraction. Okay? You find focus. You choose focus. You lock into focus. When you are focused, distraction does not exist. What is distraction? Distraction is when you are paying attention to something other than whatever the main thing is. But if you are focused, paying attention to the main thing, you're not paying attention to something other than that, so it's impossible for you to be distracted. The only people who can recognize distraction are people who are not focused. You understand the logic of what I just did there? And what is distraction? You break it down. It's distraction. All right? Traction is when you have some, you got some footing. You know exactly where you're going. There's a path. There's a strategy. You know where you're going. Distraction is when you are off traction. You don't, don't know where you're going. You have no footing. You have no grip. You can't really see a path to getting to the end game. And this is why you feel all frazzled and all over the place because you are distracted. When you, are tra when you have traction, what is the, what's traction mean? Any of you ever drive a car and the car was, the wheels were slipping around, maybe in the rain, maybe you got stuck in the mud, maybe you're in a snowstorm or you rolled over some ice. What happens? You lose traction on the wheels and the car starts spinning and slipping all over the place. That's not a good position to be in, right? And it's the same thing that happens to people in life. They get distracted because they lose that traction because they are probably doing more than one thing at the same time. It's the same thing that happens to your, the tires on your car when you got different tires trying to do different things because one of them's on ice, one of them's on solid ground and they're all on ice and they're all trying to turn different ways and you're turning the steering wheel and everybody's going all different directions. You have lost traction. Focus is getting traction. All of your resources aligned and going in the same direction. That is completely a completely simplified process that nobody can mess up. It only gets messed up when us, us humans with our big brains and our arrogance thinking we can do more than one thing well at the same time, we always find out that we were wrong. Focus, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call a force multiplier. You understand what I mean when I say a force multiplier? When you focus on something, the longer you are focused and the stronger your focus, the stronger your force. When you are somewhat focused on something and kind of sort of doing it, you got this much energy. You got, you got a little bit of weak energy. But when you really get focused on something and you stay focused over time, your energy gets stronger and stronger and stronger because your mind Starts to let, you start to let your subconscious know, I need all of my mental faculties, all of my physical faculties, all of my emotions, all of my resources, I'm targeting on this thing right here, and that's how you get things done. People who seem to get a lot done in a short period of time is not because they're superhuman or they're way stronger than you or smarter than you, or even because they got more money or more knowledge than you, it's because they have more focus than you. And let me, let me say that a different way. It's not that they have more focus than you. We all got the same amount of focus, the same capacity for focus. It's just that they utilize and they direct their focus more than you. A lot of human beings are walking around here with no focus whatsoever. You stop the next 10 people you see on the street and ask them, what's the main thing you're focused on right now in your career, in your life, in your business, in your sport? Just ask 10 people. Most of them won't have an answer. Most of them, once they understand the question, will not have an answer to the question because they don't know what they're focused on. They got, they doing everything and nothing at the same time. You got to ask yourself, which one are you? Are you utilizing the force multiplier or are you dissipating your energies across things that are not going to get you the result? It works that much harder when you're focused on one spot. Point number three, topic here today for those who came in the middle of this, focus is easy. Distraction is the hard part in life. Point number three, when you choose your focus, 
understand that you are also, at the same time that you choose to focus, you are excluding everything else. When you choose to focus on something, you're saying, I'm not focusing on this, this, and that. If you choose to focus on, uh, you want to make a new website for yourself. When you choose to focus on making a website, that means you're not making a sales page, you're not making another sales funnel, you're not writing a book, you're not doing a live stream, you're not starting a podcast, you're not uh, going to a flea market, you're not going to the farmer's market, you're not going to the mall, you're not uh, taking photos, you are focused on just that thing. When you choose focus, you are excluding everything else. Now, when you focus, you are making a decision. And the root word of decision is incision. What does incision mean? It means to cut off. You are cutting off any other option, any other thoughts, any other ideas, any other possible paths that you can go. That's what a focus is. You choose. You decide. I'm focusing on this, and you're cutting off everything else. And that's easy. Isn't that easy to do? To just focus on one thing and cut off everything else? Now, you might say, well, it's hard, right? Because I got this thing I'm interested in and this thing, this thing, this thing. How do I decide what to focus on? Well, which one is giving you the highest return on investment? Which one are you most interested in? Which one do you see yourself doing a year from now, five years from now, 20 years from now? Ask yourself these questions and whatever one keeps coming up as an answer, maybe that's an area you should focus on. Whatever one is never coming up, maybe you shouldn't be doing that thing. You probably already know that, but if you needed someone to give you the permission to do that now, I just gave you permission to let go <clears throat> Excuse me, of some of the things that you don't really want to do, you don't really like doing, you are not good at, and you're not getting any positive results from. Why are you still doing it? When you choose wisely, you will choose to focus on something that's in your wheelhouse, something you have skill in, you're getting a return on investment, you enjoy it, you can see some positive positivity happen in the future as a result of it. This is where you choose to focus. So any, any of you who is worried about focusing, understand, working yourself to exhaustion is not the aim, ladies and gentlemen. Working hard, as hard as you can forever, is not the aim. Working hard is part of the game, but it is not the whole game. A lot of people seem to think the whole game is just work as hard as you possibly can. No, even though this is work on your game, it's also about you got to be smart. You got to be strategic about your decisions. That's why I made a master class called Hard Work Ain't Enough. You can get it at hardworkandenough.com. It's a free master class, about 90 minutes long, where I explain to you all the elements you need in life that go above and beyond just working hard. There's a lot of people out here on, in life who work hard every single day, but they have no focus or whatever they're focused on is not giving them a serious return on investment. So despite all of their efforts, they're not getting the results that they want. Anybody here? Have I described anybody here with what I just said? Have I described anybody you know with what I just said? Maybe a certain point in your life you felt like that. But when you find the focus, the choice, understand that the choice of focus comes before the effort. Choose wisely first, then work hard. All right, don't do a whole bunch of work and then say, damn, maybe I should choose wisely. No, choose first, then put a whole bunch of hard work in, and then take stock of what you're doing and see what kind of result you get. Choice plus focus equals a very smooth path. Still doesn't mean you're guaranteed success because you need the other seven elements. Go to hardworkain'tenough.com. I'll help you out with that. So let me recap what I just gave you, gave you all right here. I'm going to tell you how you can get both of these books or either one of them for free right now today. And then I'm going to take questions if we got any. I don't know if we have any, but we'll see. The topic again today is focus is easy, distraction is hard. People had this equation backwards. People often ask me, Dre, how do I stop being distracted? How can I, I, I have a trouble with focus? The problem is not avoiding distraction. The challenge is finding focus. When you find your focus, you don't have to worry about avoiding anything or getting rid of anything or not having things. You don't want to focus on the negative. You want to focus on the positive. Not what you don't want. Focus on what you do want. Focus is what you want. I'm going to tell you how it works. Point number one, paying attention and locking in on one thing is way easier, a whole lot easier than being distracted and going in a bunch of different directions. So people think it's hard to focus. No, it's not. It's hard to be distracted. Now, you find, find somebody who is distracted. Think of the last time you were distracted. That was really hard to do because your brain is trying to keep up tabs on. It's like having the, your computer open and you got like 20 tabs open in Safari or the Chrome or Firefox browser. You got 20 tabs at the same time. Eventually, your computer is going to start running slow or it's going to stop being responsive or you're going to have to restart the computer. Why? Because you got too many things going on at the same time. You're asking the computer to focus on 20 different things at once. Your brain is the exact same way. Now, the computer could do some things that your brain doesn't quite do the same way. But you understand the metaphor of what I'm giving you here. Keep one tab open. Do what you need to do in that tab. Close that tab. Open a new tab. And again, I understand sometimes on the computer you want more than one open. But you understand what I'm saying, do you not? Point number two. Focus simplifies things. If I give you one job to do and some training and tell you only do that job and you don't let your mind wander, you will probably do that job pretty well regardless of your level of talent. Why is that? Because when a person is focused, your force multiplies. Your skill multiplies. Your talent multiplies. Your energy multiplies because you are focused. I don't care how 
dumb a person is, if I give them a task that I can clearly lay out exactly what to do, exactly how to do it, and say don't do anything else but just this, as long as I know how to communicate it, that person will do that job pretty well. Why? Because when a person is focused, we usually get results. If you are not getting results and you think you are relatively smart, relatively strong, you have a good amount of energy, and you have the resources but you're still not getting results, it is probably because you lack focus. And if you don't believe me, ask somebody you know, ask someone you trust, they will help you out. Your focus is missing, that's why the results are not showing up. It's not because you lack skill, you don't need to read another book, you don't need to sign up for another course, you don't need to take another mastermind. What you need to do is eliminate things. You don't need more, you need less. Less is more. You heard that before? Less is more when it comes to focus, ladies and gentlemen. The less you are doing, the better you will be at the things that remain. Point number three. When you choose focus, it's going to be something that is picked to the exclusion of everything else. Focus is a decision. When you make a decision, you are incising. You are cutting off everything else. When you cut everything else off and you focus on one specific thing, everybody who's listening to me right now, if you are relatively smart, if you are relatively resourceful, if you can know how to read and write, you have the, enough faculties that when you focus, you will get better results than when you're not focused, bottom line. Just to be clear, everybody, working hard is not the key to success. It is an element of success. It is not the key. Go to hardworkandenough.com, get that free master class. You can figure out how to utilize your focus and all the elements that go with hard work to create that, that cherry pie of success, so to speak. Now, let me tell you about these two books here, and I'm going to take questions. Both of these books... I already paid for these books. I got a stack of these books sitting in a box about 15 feet away from me right now. I'm shipping these books out worldwide. I already paid for it. All you got to do is take care of the shipping. This book right here is called The Mirror of Motivation. The Self-Guide, the Self-Discipline. We've been talking about discipline here today. Focus is a discipline. Why would you want this book? Even if you're not that, you're not that excited about this one, let me tell you why you want this book. Because when you get disciplined and when you get focused, you can step out of the old version of you. That version of you that's not getting the results that you want. Step into the new version of you. It's still you, but with a new energy, a new focus, a new way of being. And when you change your being, you change your energy associations. When your energetic associations change, your actions change. And when your actions change, your results change. So if you want different results in life, you got to change your actions. You want different actions. You got to change your energy to change your energy. You got to change your focus. Everybody understand that? That's what this book will help you do. And it's not me hyping you up. It's me showing you how to look in the mirror and doing it for yourself over and over and over again. If you want that, go to mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is free. You pay for the shipping. Mirrormotivation.com worldwide. I'm shipping that book. This right here is called the Overseas Basketball Blueprint, the self-guide to self-discipline. No, that's the self-guide to self-discipline. This is the Overseas Basketball Blueprint, the self-guide playing basketball overseas. If you want to play ball overseas, even if you came from a small school, no school, undecorated background, have no kind of connections, no nothing, but you feel like you have the tools to play professional basketball, you want to get this book. 237 pages, I give you the full blueprint. Everything you need to know, everything you need to do, everywhere you need to go, and everything you need to not do. The places you need to not go, the things you need to stop doing that could derail your career, all in this book. Balloverseas.com is where you get this book. Balloverseas.com. The book is already paid for. You take care of the shipping. Balloverseas.com if you want to play basketball overseas. Now, let's see what we got in the comment section. If we got any questions that I can address, I will address them here. If you got a question, go ahead and post it. Facebook, you got a question, go ahead and post it. Cam Grilly said you got three of my books. That's what's up. Shout out to everybody who got any of the books. They are on the way. We've just been packaging up books all this past weekend. We just shipped a bunch of books got shipped out on Saturday. We shipped a bunch more books out today, as a matter of fact, and we got more on the way. I'm waiting for my printer to send me even more books because I'm just telling them just keep sending them because we're going to keep sending them out. As soon as they get in, we're sending them out. Ant Jaggers, appreciate you. Thank you for the comment. Sports Lover says, I suck at advanced math like statistics or algebra 2 I feel dumb hire a tutor go on YouTube I mean it's people on YouTube teaching that stuff for free go find those teachers who can train you and help you learn it so don't feel dumb you might you might be dumb as in you don't know what's going on and that kind of dumb not dumb like you don't have the capacity to learn just dumb as in you don't know something everybody's dumb at different points in life all you gotta do is get the information you won't be dumb anymore I man it says I work overnight Security too. What did you work 
that? When did I work that? I never worked overnight security. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Ibrahim says, what's your opinion on double rims? What about them? Jack says, what's your favorite program to increase vertical leap? The ultimate athlete program because it helps you work on your entire athletic body for basketball. Not just vertical leap, but everything else you need in order to leap vertically. To jump vertically, you got to have a ball. Uh, you got to be able to play defense. You got to be able to weave in and out of the, 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 the defense to get to the rim. And then like, you're just going to be in an empty gym doing dunks. I mean, if that's what you're trying to do, then I'll have a different answer. But ultimate athletes for basketball players, total body. Flexibility, vertical, power, strength, agility, conditioning, uh, flexibility, I said, speed, reaction time. All of that is in the Ultimate Athlete program. It's 15 weeks, and you don't even need a gym to do the program. So I would suggest Ultimate Athlete because right now, we don't know. This might, it might be another wave of COVID-19 after all these protests. I think everybody's supposed to be getting COVID now, right? So you might they might lock those gyms away again. D. Fear says, would a blueprint work if I want to take my football talent overseas? Well, first of all, the blueprint is a book. Books don't work. Books provide uh, information and frameworks. This book will provide you a framework. You got to work. All right, the work is done by you, not by the book. Secondly, this book is made specifically for basketball players, but the principles, the frameworks in the book, I'm sure you can apply them to the football world, but I will give you a disclaimer. I did not play professional football overseas. So if anything in this book does not apply to the football world, don't be mad at us. But listen, the book is free. All you do is pay for the shipping. You ain't really got nothing to lose, D. I don't think there's anybody who wrote the overseas football blueprint, so you could do worse than getting this book. You might as well get it. If anything, you'll get one nugget, 237 pages. I'm sure you'll get at least one nugget that you could use for your football career. That would be my guess. That's the risk that I would take. August says, should I continue doing something I'm talented at but do not enjoy or try other things to see if I'm talented at something else? How about you find something you're talented at and you enjoy? Why you got to pick one? I don't think you got to sacrifice your enjoyment just because you're talented at something. I would say do something that where you match, you check off both boxes. And says, how important is self-control in pro basketball off the court? I actually just recorded some material on that. It's going to be on my podcast. So for y'all, those of y'all who don't know, the Overseas Basketball Blueprint podcast. Oh, you didn't know there was a podcast? There's a podcast. It just came out today. We just dropped it today. The first 40 episodes are out. It's called the Overseas Basketball Blueprint podcast podcast let me see if i can pull up a better picture i got a better picture of it for those y'all don't know just came out today overseas there it is overseas basketball blueprint apple podcast spotify soundcloud all of that so that's a good timing on that question uh anth jaggers how important is it it's very important same way is important for people in the united states playing in the nba you ever hear about an nba player doing something dumb off the court and it messed up their chance to play on the court well uh, overseas over there is people over there too. And so whatever dumb a basketball player has done in the NBA that you know about, somebody overseas has done it too. You just don't know about it. So it's just as important over there as it is over here. Doing something dumb could cost you your job. Just like you see NFL players, baseball players, basketball players losing their job for doing dumb stuff off the court. It happens overseas too. It just doesn't come on the news. Jack says jump attack by Tim Grover is that way as well. I'm almost done with that. I did jump, jump attack. I like jump attack. But I recommend my own better than I would recommend Tim Grover's. Simply because I know mine is comprehensive and you don't even need a gym to do mine. So mine is more versatile. ARB, what's going on? Somebody said, what happened to work on your game store? What store? <laughs> what you want to buy? I'll tell you where to get it. Whatever you want to buy, I'll tell you the link to go get it. I don't know what you're, talk I don't know what you're referring to. Everything that's available for sale is still available for sale. Trust me. Now, let me tell you about this book right here. It's called Work On Your Game, Using the Pro Athlete Mindset to Dominate Your Game in Business, Sports, and Life. This is the book that I wrote to when, actually, I got the, the publishing deal to do this book when I was stepping off the stage from doing a speaking gig in Atlanta. But I made a 250-page hardcover book where I took the best 250 pages of my whole philosophy and condensed it down. The best 250 pages are in this book right here. I tell you how I came up in the basketball world to become a pro in the business world to get into building my own business and being a CEO of my own company the principles the frameworks that go into doing that so you don't have to be aiming to be a basketball player or a have an online brand or being even be an entrepreneur or a professional speaker or author or none of that the frameworks apply to anyone so if you work in an office building if you're a construction worker if you're an architect if you're a library teacher if you're a rapper the principles in this book the frameworks from this book will apply to anything that you do. So 
uh, the player who was asking me about football, this book, the frameworks in this will help you apply as well. So I would suggest you get this one and this one. You get this book at workonyourgamebook.com. Workonyourgamebook.com. And I'm going to give you $1,200 in free digital bonuses immediately when you get this book, workonyourgamebook.com. Somebody said online products, books, is not on your website anymore. It's still on the website. We just changed the order of the pages. It's still there. If you want to buy something, tell me. I'll tell you where it's at. <laughs> like I said. <laughs> so, one more time. Miramotivation.com, balloverseas.com. Both of these books are already paid for. All you do is take care of the shipping. We ship these worldwide, anywhere that you live. For those of y'all who don't know, even those of y'all who do, I'm going to tell you again, as I do every day, I do these lives every single day, 5.15 p.m. Eastern. If you want to get game like I just gave you today, a different topic every day where I'll explain the topic, I'll break down the topic, I'll tell you exactly how to use the topic, and how to make the most of it in your life and answer your questions, it's 5.15 p.m. every single day on Facebook at Work On Your Game, Facebook slash Work On Your Game, Instagram at Dre Baldwin. D. Ferris said, what order should I read your books? They're all pretty good. I'm sure I can start anywhere. Well, which ones do you have? I've written 26 books. If you got all 26, then I'll, I'll write out a list for you. But if you have certain ones, then I can tell you. I would start, if you're an athlete, if you play ball, you should read this one first. If you don't play ball, then you would start with this one. That's why I put these two books out front so people can start, start with these two books. Then after this, then read this, and then you can read the Bulletproof Bundle. When you order this one, we're going to offer you the Bulletproof Bundle. When you order this one, we're going to offer you a book called The Truth About Overseas Basketball Exposure Camps. So listen, we got... A whole system of what you should read for each book but these are your two starter books now, if you already got these or you just want something different you can start with this so that's that all right everybody 5 15 p.m eastern every single day y'all know what it is work on your game we out of here dre all day